Hey everyone and welcome to another video. I am Mike B and today as promised we are going to be disassembling some of these uh, World War II German surplus SMK or armor piercing rounds for the K98 or various other firearms that utilize the same caliber. And we're going to be doing this for a couple reasons. One is because I'm always curious what's in different kinds of surplus ammo. I've done a couple other videos where I you know, check out what's inside various surplus from various countries and time periods. And this is a great one to do this um, with because of a couple reasons in itself. Is that one, it's World War II German ammunition, which means that you know it's very it's very collectible ammunition. I got a decent amount of it. Um, and so I'm curious and... A lot of these uh, lacquer cased, or la I'm sorry, lacquer coated steel cased rounds from the Second World War from Germany are notorious for having not so good performance and sometimes catastrophic case failures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Luckily, the, the 98 action, in my opinion, is strong enough to be able to handle a complete failure and hopefully not hurt the person shooting, which is why I personally am going to um, try attempt to fire these. I would not recommend that. For those reasons but that's why i'm disassembling this i want to see the condition of the powder because apparently with the steel case stuff what happened was over years this is the the trope i don't know how true it is but over the years the powder breaks down and kind of starts reacting with the steel and it gets really rusty and corroded and then it becomes very unsafe and un or inconsistent with performance and then sometimes total case failures occur so that's what i'm going to be doing but um that's not official safety advice to be going out and shooting this stuff i personally for my own choice, do not feel totally uncomfortable shooting a 98 action, a large ring 98 action with this kind of ammunition. So your mileage may vary. You need to make that decision on your own, but that's why I'm going to be doing this. So that's a little disclaimer. I'm sorry I had to go through that, but I'm just kind of explaining the whole purpose of this and why we're going to be doing some things in this video that um, we're, we're going to be doing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use my trusty uh, inertia bullet puller, which basically you just um, you unscrew this if you don't know how one of these works. You unscrew that, and there's a little collet right there, and you basically put the uh, the round like that. I got barbecue sauce on my fingernails still. I should have probably washed my hands a little bit, but I got too excited. And then you just put the round in there like that. Screw the uh, cap on really tight. Ugh, sorry about that squeaking. And then I'm going to go and hit it this side down against the um, concrete because this is way too soft. And these bullets are in there. Um, I hate to say this, but I already pulled a couple of these last night just to see if it was going to be worth it. And it was. It's very interesting. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and pull one of these just to show you what's in one. And then we're going to pull four of them for the second phase of our video. Whew, that came out pretty easily. All right, I might not even have to edit that. I thought it was going to take a lot longer. Some of them last night took a lot longer. So what this cool little thing does is, um, as you can see, it uses inertia to pull the bullet out of the casing. Uh, we'll take a look at all that stuff, all the components. And I've got this nice white paper bowl so we can see the contrast and the color of the powder. And you just pour that out. There goes the bullet, the 178 grain apparently bullet. I don't have a scale that measures in grains. So right away, you can see that on the bottom part of the steel core bullet, there is some rust and corrosion. Um, that's not really of concern to me because that probably won't affect the bullet's performance that much. Um, so that's, I mean, that was what was common on the ones last night that I pulled at uh, my neighbor's house. So you can see that there is some rust in there mixed in with this powder, right? And it's a very, it's a flake powder. It's a little bit smaller and finer than the Turkish surplus. So... Yeah, you can see that there is actually rust mixed into there. Now, I did last night, I'm not going to do this because obviously it's in a paper bowl right now and I want you to visually see this more than anything, but I did light two rounds worth of this on fire out in the driveway and they both burned very consistently and it was very consistent to what other rifle powders burn like when you light them on fire. It was a very, um, I, I, I used the word already, but consistent. It was, it was, it flared. There weren't any hot spots or flare ups or kind of cold spots in the little pile. It just burned through it. And very little smoke, like actually smokeless powder, which, which is pretty cool. I, usually you get some white smoke that comes out of smokeless powder when you um, light it. Um, but this actually had no smoke. It smelled pretty good, too. I love the smell of burning powder. All right, let's take a look at the uh, inside of this guy. All right, hopefully you can see down in there. No, and I don't have my flashlight. Let me see really quick. 
All right, so you can't see it in here. The lighting's kind of bad, and again, I can't find my flashlight. You know, I'm very untactical today. We'll just put it that way. Uh, but there are two standard Berdan flash holes in there. Like, um, I know I pulled some ammo apart a while back on a video, and there was only one Berdan flash hole, which I've rarely seen, and it doesn't perform the best. But, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is, now that we've seen this and what the, what the components look like and the powder looks like, I'm going to pull these other four rounds out Use the powder. Maybe I'll maybe I'll actually go out and burn this stuff on the on some concrete here just for the video. Yeah, I'll do that, but I'll have to film that separately and then edit it in right um, when I feel like putting it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull these really quick, get the bullets and powder out of there because we are also gonna be testing the primers because a lot of these, a lot of the old ammo Berdan primers, they do last a lot longer in storage, but there comes a point where they start getting really um, kind of hang fiery and a lot of them are just duds. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to grab these really quick, pull all of them, and then we'll get to the fun stuff. Jeez, that one took that one took about 10 good whacks. I gave him a good whack on the head. See, that stuff's got a little bit of rust mixed in with it, too. I should actually keep these separate, but whatever. We'll just see how the overall burn goes. Yeah, this one's got some... So this is on the second bullet. Very, very similar in in appearance. That powder was less rusty. You can kind of see that. I'll pour the new stuff. I also forgot to mention on the inside of these cases, I actually see um, just a light coating of, uh, of rust. I mean, it's like a powder coating. So I don't know how much it's actually going to affect the performance of these and how different they're going to be. I should actually get a chronograph someday and you know start doing tests like that. But anyway, uh, I'm going to pull this last bullet and then we'll get to some uh, interesting stuff like testing the primers. All right, so on this one, there was actually, I mean, I'll try to pick up the casing without, um, I'll just show you this from the side. There's a little like layer of, of rust, like a coating of rust on the outside of this because of the, um, when this came out and there was, there's kind of like rust dust in there right now still kind of had to blow it out. So that must be what all these um, old timers were talking about that used to shoot this stuff back in the 90s and whatever. It was easier to find and they were talking about rust, but I again, I don't know how that would actually affect performance. So at this point, I'm going to set the powder aside and go outside and actually burn it. Okay, so now we're out at our extremely secure rocket test facility. And I made a little trail because I'm gonna get back because this is four four rounds worth of powder, but I'm gonna I'm gonna still um, just keep it on the powder itself burning so you can see that it's actually burning quite consistently. Ah, oh, that's warm. See, it's burning like everything that's been consistent with when I used to mess around with powder and just kind of seeing different burn rates it's pretty consistent so that's what i mean by that like it there was no real big flaring up unless the amount varied but um there wasn't any any spot that kind of flared up or went out it was again consistent so that's what it looked like to burn four rounds worth of powder of the smk stuff oh, kind of got a little buzz off of that i'm just joking of course not I mean, sit there and breathe it in um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to test out the primers, and I am not in my house, so don't worry about this. I'm out in the, uh, in the uh, shop. So primers also really don't send a lot of sparks and stuff out of a barrel. So I'm going to be using my, I know that I'm going to have to clean this. I'm going to go run water through it. Don't you worry. I'm going to be using my 1938 Mauser Oberndorf um, K98, and I'm just going to be loading the rounds in individually because we're going to see if there's any hang fires. I know these are a little bit loud, but... Not on your end, but on my end. But uh, yeah, here, I'm going to get back a little bit. All right, test one. 
Okay, it went bang. Got a little puff of smoke out of the end of the bore. That's a good sign, good extraction. And then you can, uh, you can see the primer mark right there. No blown primers, not, didn't puncture it. So, oh, there's also the head stamp. I didn't get it that well in the first video, but there it is. Oh, man, that's a strong smelling primer. Woo! That's really strong. It's not that pleasant either. All right. Case number two. Went bang. Yep, still looks good. Case number three, they're all consistently um, loud. I mean, they're not heinously loud, but it's a nice little snap. Again, good extraction. All right, now we'll go with the last one. We'll go to number four. So far, we are at 100%, no hang fires, no duds, which is always a good sign. Come on. Always the last one is going to be a pain in the ass. All right, case number four. Perfect. No hang fire, no nothing. So any hang fires that would have been under there would have probably been the, the result of the powder and the uh, rust that's mixed in or whatever the case may be. <sighs> oh yeah, those are very stinky. Whew. But yeah, so all four cases, or all four primers I should say, went bang when they were uh, when the trigger was pulled. There was no delay and they're all consistently loud. So I'm guessing ignition will probably not be the issue it might just be the uh, powder if there are any issues which is going to be really fun to see out on the range so oh sorry i know I, that, might, that might have been loud so um god that's really strong primers i'm gonna go step over here Whew. anyway so i hope you guys enjoy this video this is now I'm, I'm feeling a lot better about actually going out and firing these at the range um in a very safe manner of course always wear you know protection out there which i will be but um you know, eye protection, ear protection, you name it. But uh, yeah, so I'll be going out there and doing that test. I hope you enjoyed not only just breaking apart and seeing the different components, but also watching the powder burn and how it burns. You can go over, you guys that are experts on like burn rates can go over that, slow it down, do whatever. And um, then I hope you enjoyed the primer tests, which were so far so good. Um, keep in mind, this came from that box that I opened up and all this stuff looks brand new. I do have a couple other boxes where the stuff is kind of corroded on the outside. I'm gonna off camera pull some of those bullets and see how that does. And then when we do the test out at the range, we will actually be able to differentiate which ones have the outside corroded cases if I feel safe enough to shoot them. That about wraps her up, people. So um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative. I know there's a lot of you guys out there that are really into ammo and uh, I am too. It's pretty fun. And um, it's also good to be able to just break down a couple of these and then you know, have the research out there. That's kind of why I do these things. Some people might say it's destroying history, but I think it's adding to it by um, educating people on, you know, what what's inside. So if they ever buy a round or a box of these for themselves to collect, they don't have to take it apart if they're curious. So anyway, that's that. That's all I've got. If you want to become a sponsor of the channel, you could do that by becoming a Patreon supporter or a channel member. Five bucks a month or more on either method of support gets you into my Discord server, which is really fun. There's a lot of really, really good people, really like-minded, interesting people on there. It's a lot of fun. I actually learn a lot from the people on there, and we exchange info, and it's just a really cool community. Anyway, so that gets you in there, and your support just kind of goes towards videos like this, you know? These rounds are about a dollar a piece retail, so that's four bucks. I know it's not your problem, and it's not really breaking the bank, but when we go out to shoot, we're obviously going to be shooting more than four rounds, so um, anyway... Your support helps with the ammunition, ballistic test costs for like the helmets and the uh, the travel and the vests, which we're going to start doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's where your support does go. And it's, so far, the past couple years have been awesome. They've been allowing me to make really cool videos uh, like this, which is really fun. And I always love learning and being able to teach people tangible items. So that's how that goes. If you want to support me, but you can't do it financially, I totally understand that. That's that's not a problem at all. Been there and done that. So uh, what I did though is I also liked these people's videos who I wanted to support but I couldn't do it financially I wrote a comment in there saying hey here's what I thought of the video and then I shared this video out for, um, to other people that might think it's interesting so those are all ways you can do that and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you're in the third category and you just don't really want to support me and you're like eh, whatever well I hate to break it to you but you already have by watching this video so to everyone who watched this video 
Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next video that hopefully involves some range time and some steel.